Um, anyway, what stands out in my mind was I felt like I had sold out and I was going to WWE against a lot of my former principles. You know, when you travel down the road of life, you're looking at everything from a different angle, so your perspective has to change. Shadow kind of follows up, um, mentioned something about what are your favorite memories of that 2001 in invasion? Was there something else significant that uh, maybe you didn't haven't mentioned before? But, uh, dude, I'll just say right out, though, I mean, you showing up with the invasion, that was like the cherry on the top of it all because it's like RVD and, you you know, from the crowd reaction, it was like, bam, RVD's here. And uh, you were like basically the baby face of that heel group in a lot of ways because people were digging you so much. And um, I wasn't surprised, you know, that's how the wrestling fans were treating me on, on smaller and bigger shows, so I didn't expect it to change. It's not a whole group of different people, although I think Vince always thought it was. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that, but um, <clears throat> anyway, what stands out in my mind was I felt like I had sold out. And I was going to WWE against a lot of my former principles. You know, when you travel down the road of life, you're looking at everything from a different angle. So your perspective has to change. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're not growing. And anyway, if I wanted to be a TV wrestler in the United States, I say that because Japan at that time was still an option. Um, there was uh, WWE and that was it. He bought all the competition. There wasn't anything else um, career-wise to, to consider. And I knew that all I had to do was say, okay, I'm ready to have the conversation. And that's what I did. And I called Paul and told him. Um, and then I had to meet with JR uh, because I had a reputation for being hard to get along with. Because when I had done the invasion angle in 97 with WWE, when I wrestled a very young Jeff Hardy, and then they started teaming me and uh, Jerry Lawler up, um, I ended up calling it quits one night, pulling the plug on the whole project, and, and pulling the boys out. And, you know, there's, of course, a big story to that if you haven't heard it. But because of that, and I left on a TV day before the before our show started, um, I had a little reputation. I had talked with JR. He thought I was cool. We got along good. I ended up getting hired. I got a starting date. Um, I'm going to Atlanta for my first day, and I'm thinking, man, you know, uh, what are they going to do? Because they – had always, in my eyes, erased the history of somebody's careers just to replace it with a stupid gimmick that may or may not work. And then, you know, if it doesn't work, maybe they'll repackage them. Otherwise, they just get rid of them and oh, we'll try another guy. And that was my feelings about WWE. I didn't know what they were going to do with me. You know, you hear some of the guys now that I won't name have in their they want it in their contract like i'll hold the belt for this many months or whatever well for me it was always a lot more of a shoot than that i thought you know and this is the way that stubborn sabu you know would, would teach on to me that um uh you should you should deserve the belt or else not get it you should be the guy you know that everyone wants to see the hardest workers standing out um, you know, the one that's drawing the money, boom, they should make you the champion. They should have to make you the champion because they got no choice. Well, I, I still was in that frame of thought. Um, and and I, I don't have, you know, necessarily have to change because, you know, look at me now. What am I going to do? You know, I'm not trying to adjust anything. But anyway, um, what I remember was, okay, here I go, Atlanta. I'm going to go to the arena. Uh, 
see what they got in store for me, what silly character they're going to, they're going to call me or outfit they're going to want to put on me or whatever. And then, um, I heard Rob and I looked Tommy dreamer. I was totally, you know, I love Tommy. Yeah. So it was awesome. What are you doing here? And he threw me a shirt and I looked at it, it said ECW. And then I learned that I was there to represent ECW, not a race, my entire career, but actually add depth to the legacy, actually, actually continue the story and, and use that momentum of everything that I'd done, all of my efforts and energy up to that point was going to continue forward with here, which is a dream come true and something I didn't even expect. So that's one of the best memories. I didn't know I was coming in to represent the invasion and ECW. So there's that. And I remember, you know, meeting a lot of the WCW guys or power plant guys that were supposedly up and coming and how competitive they were with each other. Guys from Ohio Valley um, that were all of a sudden um, in the company, taking up space on the card, bumping into each other. And uh, uh, there was still room for some guys that weren't that good back then in the business. And they would push them too, have them squash everybody for a few months. And then they're like, oh, he stinks. Yeah, he's not getting any better. Let's not get rid of him. And it's like, uh, hey, thanks. You know, we're wiping debris off of us in the background. Like, I appreciate it, man. That's way to way to treat us. But I always felt that it, you have such a different perspective when you're in that competitive spirit and when what you do or they have you do on a nightly basis directly affects the money that you're making. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's another thing to factor in for sure. It's a, oh my God. Um, I remember Mike awesome. I remember Jindrak and of course, uh, Stasiak and um, Palumbo and yeah. uh, uh, Just Incredible was there. Uh, Rhino. Rhino. Um, Spike was Spike there at that point, or did he show up later on? Spike Dudley. Not sure. I'm not sure. I know Booker came in yeah, um, before before me, but with that whole invasion. Yeah, absolutely. And then Buff Bag was there for like one show, and that was it. But um, trying to think the book that. wasn't part of the alliance, was he? Like he came in when they bought the WCW, but I don't feel like he was. He was. Part of the oh, he was. Yeah, he was part of it. Oh. Yeah, from what I remember. Yeah, he was because he was the champ. And then, the, yeah, he was positioned kind of almost in a heel role, I think, with that. And then, like, obviously, when Stone Cold turned heel and joined the Alliance and all that stuff was going on, too. Uh, um, okay. Hey, speaking of, though, we were talking last week about Mike Awesome, and somebody was like, hey, do you remember the confrontation you had? And you, it didn't jog your memory, really. But then I saw on social media it got posted, and what a fucking cool moment that was between you and Mike Awesome and ECW. It was like that crowd was yeah. going nuts. And uh, Awesome was cutting this promo saying, like, man, that makes me the whole fucking show. And saying and the crowd is just, like, going back at him and all this. He's telling people to shut the fuck up. I think he told Paul to shut up. And then you came out. The crowd was going nuts. And you had a great line, too. And I'm sure you used it before. But you're like, man, I got a lot of time to burn. Why don't we do this right fucking now? And then you guys tease that you're going to do it. And like that crowd is so, it was such a cool moment though, Rob. It was awesome to see. Yeah. 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 yeah I saw that when, uh, when he shared it and he actually said, this is the, this is the uh, thing I was talking about on the show today. And, um, but, but I, I, I watch Instagram um, almost all the time with the volume down. Um, and so I felt the energy, but I, I wanted to go back when I wasn't in bed at night um, and, and listen to it. I didn't do that yet, but uh, well, I'll send it to you again yeah. if you need it. Because <laughs> it, I was great. I clipped it we, up and I put it on our YouTube too, which is uh, for the little compilation stuff. So there's little quotes in there too. I didn't remember that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing too is I, I did with Fonzie yesterday, and like we were talking about Giant Gonzalez and like his time at WWE, like when he started and helping him out there. And then somebody brought up in the chat, like they were like, "Hey, do you remember the steel cage match that you refereed between Shawn Michaels and um, and uh, Bret Hart?" And he's like, "Nope, not at all. <laughs> Don't remember it." But because you guys have been part of so much different shit, it's crazy to keep track of all that thing. Yeah, I, I'm. I mean, if you 
if you really think about it, I'm surprised at what we do remember because yeah. because it's really rare that we forget. I think like uh, a, spe a specific match, and most mostly we. Well, I don't even know if that's true. Don't test me. <laughs> I won't test you. <laughs> My memory's like dog shit, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, I can remember. But all the house day. shows and stuff, I wouldn't remember. You know that. Yeah. TVs yeah. stand out a little bit more because maybe, maybe, maybe we've seen them. Like we actually watched ourselves in that. Because, because, like, if you did TV Monday night, a Monday Night Raw, usually uh, Tuesday uh, is SmackDown. When you're in catering, they're uh, they're watching Monday Night Raw on there, and oh. so like. So uh, either you'll eventually get to to your shit, or you can ask, you know, hey, is, you know, is anybody watch? You know, do you mind if I watch my match? If you don't, and you, you know, fast forward to it and shit, and uh, that's that's something that happens a lot. So even if we didn't uh, keep up with the whole show, we would uh, a lot of times. That's how talent would would would, have, and then and then once you've seen the match, then you're gonna remember it a lot more obviously than like a house show match that wasn't recorded to the best of your knowledge you know? right right yeah and plus you're going from town to town and all that stuff and trying to keep track of all that's got to be a little a little tough one of a kind with rob van dam is recorded in front of a live studio audience 